it's looking dark outside. It's about to rain again. <laughs> ah, the rain. It's just now starting to kind of dry up on the ground, but it's coming again. It's humid. Yes. Good morning from the Denman Homestead. Good morning. Stephanie and Buddy, and I want to tell you before it pours down raining, ooh, what I found out of the 800 seeds that I started came first, also, that I was able to harvest by the way, also what I found to be um, less pest resistant or um, what is more pest re or what's, uh, what am I trying to say? What has produced? Huh? What has produced? Yeah, well, what's what's produced, but also we've got some stuff that's more um, susceptible. There we go. Susceptible to different funguses and stuff. So I wanted to walk you through really quick and show you what I've liked growing, what I feel is produced more, what I feel is produced first. Um, and what I'll probably grow again. Let me show this. Jalapeno. Just, uh, just picked it right off the vine. Our first jalapeno. Watch how, watch how manly I am. I'm gonna get the seeds. Wouldn't it be funny if you mix it up with a hot jalapeno? Why are you gonna, why are you gonna give it away? <laughs> You're so manly. You're so That's manly. a not hot. It's a not hot jalapeno. It's got the, the flavor, the crispness. Oh no my heat. gosh! What? Do you feel that wind? Yeah, it's cold. That's a cold wind. Wow, is that a cold front? Blowing through in May. Cold front means it might be high 80s, yeah. so low 90s. Yeah. I'm digging it. Wow, that was a cool breeze. But that also means that we're probably gonna get rain here in a second. So let me show you something. Okay, we planted black beauties and Ford Hook Zucchini on this row. Honestly, I could not tell a difference in either one when it came to productivity or resistance to bugs or squash boar moths or anything like that. They both produced well. They both produced a great zucchini. Uh, lasted a long time. Both of these varieties uh, are susceptible to um, some of the powdery mildew so that is going to be a common theme that we're finding here in the garden powdery mildew and it's due to the amount of rain and humidity in my area right now um, i have pruned and spaced these far enough apart to where each plant is not touching necessarily but there's still it's just it's just not dry enough right now for the uh, leaves to completely um, ward off that powdery mildew and powdery, powdery mildew is a spore so once you have it on one plant it travels by air to another plant that is also susceptible to carry uh, powdery mildew so if you take a look around, not every plant you'll see here will have powdery mildew on it, just the plants that are more susceptible to them, which are the squash varieties. Um, those are the ones that get most of the powdery mildew. I will say my yellow squash, um, they are not holding up. You can tell by the yellowing of the leaves compared to the zucchini variety uh, as well, plant-wise. Um, they are lacking in they're, they're they're lacking in nutrients because of so much rain that it's zapping the uh, the soil and even though we're replacing it with chicken manure and other sorts of organic fertilizers they're just having a hard time so that's the good bad and the truth and the ugly and all of that with the plants that are going on now now powdery mildew and those types of things will not affect the outcome of the squash. It doesn't bother this so much. Does it put stress on the plant? Yes. Um, there is something that you can do to, to
to help with powdery mildew and that's neem oil. I have sprayed neem oil on my plants and I will show you that here. All right, I'm looking out the window from the house a second ago and I see a light in the garden. I went to ask Steph what it was and she's not here so I <laughs> grabbed my phone and looked and it's Steph. Steph is in the garden with a headlamp on. She, it's dark. She's still in the garden. Steph, what are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Are you filming me? <laughs> yes, I'm filming you. You're spraying neem oil? Yes. To fight the, the powdery mildew. To fight the powdery mildew. And you're doing it in the dark. Well, I have to. <sighs> Day or night. Day or night. She's in the garden. Okay, well, uh, good luck. Thank you. I'm going to go back inside. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm pretty dedicated to trying to suppress the, um, the amount of stress on the plants. Neem oil is just a natural oil that uh, helps with different funguses and, and insects and pests. But regardless, it's still here and still an issue, but we're still getting squash and as long as we're still getting the vegetables that's all that really matters oh my gosh ah, i missed one so uh anyway ford hook as far as the zucchini goes and the black beauties they're they're both great yellow squash yellow crookneck squash and uh the regular squash still the same it's uh oh my good lord you think you get them all guys you think you get them all I'm gonna get distracted, so I'm not even gonna go there. That's my take on the squash, okay? Uh, the melons. So I planted two different varieties of melons. Uh, and as far as melons go, I mean cantaloupe, the cantaloupe variety. This first variety here is going to be Sweet Passion. I got most of my seeds from Baker Creek Seeds. Um, not affiliated, don't get paid by them, but they're all heirloom varieties and I love the way that they produce. So this, I'll tell you when we're going to get to our next variety, but this variety, the sweet passion variety, I noticed produced first and produced more melons per plant. So look, this has four just right here on this little, this little clump of area. So we've got a lot of cantaloupes coming and if I were to plant them again, I would plant this variety over the next variety. The next variety is producing and is, is uh, growing well, it's, it just didn't start as soon and isn't, does not provide as many uh, cantaloupes per plant as I found the Sweet Passion did. I'm trying to not to step. It's getting a little difficult here. Oh, also lesson learned. I will not be planting any sort of vining melons in the middle of rows anymore. I will plant them on the outside. We need to do some basil, babe. I know, I know. I mean, so, uh, pesto. Pesto. We need to do some pesto. Okay, we'll harvest some and we can get some for today. Um, something got those duck eggs over there. I know, I saw. I was thinking about it. It's pretty, whatever is eating them possum or a raccoon or something is pretty close to the chicken coop so 
I know. If we see them again, we probably need to just relocate. Did you collect them. the eggs so they don't come back? The shells? Yeah. No, I'll grab them. Yeah. So this right here is the Hale's Best 45. That's the variety. We'll see melons. There will be some in here. They're just not as prolific. Um, they didn't start as soon as the others, even though they were all started at the same time. They didn't start producing. Um, and I just don't see that they have as many plant or fruit per plant. So if I'm going to try to get the bang out of the buck, I'm going to replant the sweet passion uh, cantaloupes next time. Maybe skip out on the Hale's Best 45s. All right, let me go. Basil, this is a cinnamon basil. This is our first time growing cinnamon basil. There's so many different varieties of basil. This basil has absolutely taken off. It's like hedge. Uh, it's over Buddy's knees, basically mid thigh. And the only thing I will say about this basil is that it does bolt early. Um, it flowers, so you're just going to have to stay on top of the flowers and snip them off. It smells awesome though. Oh man, it does. It smells so good. We tried our hand at beets. Uh, they're actually doing pretty well. They're striped beets. They're the only on top of beets that we, we grew. Um, so we don't have anything to compare them with. Yeah, Papa wants us to pickle them. Pickle the beets, yes. Yep. We're gonna try that. So now we've come to the green beans. I will tell you, we grew two varieties of green beans. This is the Kalima, Kalima, Kalima variety here. Oh, and that's why we can't have nice things. So, I'll tell you, I've always grown um, Blue Lake green beans. And listen, we're not out of our growing season yet. They just actually started. These are Blue Lake. But just take a look. Yes, these are very bushy. They're a bush variety. However, the Kalima produced first and their flowers are more on top. There's not as much foliage, so they're almost easier to find the green bean where you don't have to dig through so much leafiness to find your green beans. They produced first over the Blue Lakes. They are just as productive, if not more than the Blue Lakes, but I don't know, we're not out of the growing season yet, so I don't know if they will stop producing sooner, but I will tell you the first beans that I harvested were the Kalima variety green beans over the Blue Lake variety, which no shade, no shade on Blue Lake, love Blue Lake, but giving you the honest truth here, what, what produced first for me. Um, can't really say much on okra. We're just now starting to see our okra start to come into bloom, but I've only grown one variety of okra this year. Tomatoes, y'all. Okay, my first red tomato that I picked was Bonnie Best Tomato. That was the first one that turned red that I was able to harvest out of all my varieties, which I think I have like eight or nine different varieties. Just now, I'm getting some beefsteak that are coming in to be harvested. Uh, that one was on the small side, but these beefsteaks, this one's turning a little bit pink, are, uh, and then I've got a couple Romas back here that are just needing a couple more days that will be able to be picked. And you guys know what I did to help my Roma tomato, to help all my tomatoes avoid that blossom end rot. And that's where you have a calcium deficiency. I poured the powdered eggshell into the holes before I buried my tomato plants to help with blossom end rot. And even with that, my aromas are, are seeing, some of them are seeing some blossom end rot, not all of them. So those are the only tomatoes of the varieties that are showing signs of blossom end rot, which like I said, is a calcium deficiency. I'm not really seeing any pet, too many pests. There are some aphids. I did find one hornworm um, this one's looking a little sad and y'all, it could be overwatering. 
could be because we're getting a whole lot of rain. Um, it's hard. It's hard right now to control the weather, and that's just something that we're going to have to deal with. But we are um, starting to see our tomatoes start to ripen. And again, the first one out of all the varieties was Bonnie's Best. It's right here. Bonnie Best. And we already took them off the vine and gave them the pawpaw. <laughs> we, it actually came off this plant right here, uh, this little cluster. So we, we popped some of those off and we gave them to pawpaw and he's really happy about it. Now, look at these spoon tomatoes. They were, they, they're coming in second as far as red ripe tomatoes. So these spoon tomatoes are rocking and rolling. They're everywhere and they are just now starting to turn red and <laughs> they're so cute. I want to make a pasta dish with them. So we will, we will start to harvest those. As far as the other tomato variety, we already harvested some green giants. Those were fried green tomatoes and delicious. Please, if you love green tomatoes, grow these green giants. These are them right here, actually. Um, they get a lot bigger than this, but they're the size of my, bigger than my palm. They're delicious, they're meaty, they have very few seeds. Um, they're hardy, they're tall. This is over five feet tall. Uh, so, yeah, they, they are a great slicing green tomato. Um, we've already eaten those as well. Uh, the other tomato varieties, the um, heirloom variety makes, the uh, Cherokee purples, um, the black beauties, those are all still, the beef steaks, those are all still waiting to be harvested. I have not yet been able to get any of these off of the vine just yet because these take more time to, to come to maturity. Uh, I'll know when to pick these whenever they start to get a little tender and they're not so firm. And also the green will start to turn to a red color. So we'll give those a little bit more time to cook. Corn's doing great. Uh, my only downfall or downside on the corn is that we've gotten a lot of rain. There's some yellowing of the leaves at the bottom. There's some standing water down there when it rains hard. And some of my corn is falling over with wind and also some little ducks that like to come through here and look for bugs, but they inadvertently push over my little baby corns. And there's nothing I really can do about that. So, but I have enough corn to, uh, I'll be fine. It's not, I'm not missing anything, so, but we're good. All right, Lufodome. Lufas are doing really well. This is, I only grew one variety of Lufa. Lufa is a natural sponge, and we will continue to let these grow and dry on the vine, and when they dry out, that's when we will harvest them, and I will do a whole video on that, but I have nothing to compare it to. So, Got a little red one down there. These tomatoes were actually all cuttings. I did some cuttings of other tomatoes, so I don't know what the variety is. I just stuck them in the ground and we will see what comes of them. Um, yeah, it's a little tight through here. Oh wow, is that a red tomato down there? Holy cow, I must have missed that one, let's see. Oh, wow. Hmm. Okay. Did you see These this? little sour gherkins are adorable. Uh, there are those little watermelon looking cucumbers. Lesson learned on these sour gherkins is that they vine like crazy. I didn't know, never grew them before, but let me tell you something. This plant right here, yes, babe. What? Are you kidding me? Let me see. Hold please. 
You guys, we don't own ducks. Let me just tell you that. We are not duck owners. But, oh, they even made a little nest, babe. Mm-hmm. That's so cute. So guys, we actually found a nest of duck eggs over by the chicken playpen, over by one of the stumps, and there was a clutch of three eggs. And I was gonna leave them there to see if they were gonna sit on them. But this morning I found that they had been eaten. So we're gonna have to start collecting these eggs so that we don't draw possum and raccoon over. Uh, but they're actually Kim's ducks. They love these garden rows. They, they absolutely love down. this garden. They will walk up and down. They will just, they don't bother anything. They don't eat anything. Um, I just see them, they like beak their way through the um, straw looking for bugs and things. Um, they don't really make a mess. So yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. And uh, we've had ducks before. We don't have any now, but uh, those are Kim's ducks. That's a big a cucumber there. Okay, let's go back to the sour gherkins. I'll leave this over here. Next to the egg. Remember to collect. Do you think that that, dug, that duck laid that egg there because they came back to their nest and it was kind of already eaten, so they made a new nest? It's possible. Yeah. All three of I just collected all three of the eggs that were here, so it's definitely they definitely are I guess picking a new spot. Yeah. Okay, so the sour gherkins, the variety of cucumber are down here and they are um, out of control vining, vining all through these tomato plants all the way over here to this tomato plant. So I suspect they will be everywhere. Um, so that is a lesson that I'm learning about sour gherkins. Um, so word of caution, I did not know how vining they will be. They're delicious. They are absolutely good. I don't have any to harvest right now because I, I eat them as I'm out here. Uh, now, what variety of cucumber would I plant again? 100% without a doubt, these market more cucumbers. They, just take a look at this foliage. They are a vining variety. Um, they produce really well. They are a snacking cucumber or a pickling cucumber. But I want to tell you, I want to show you something. I planted these at the same time as I planted my Boston pickling cucumbers. And Boston pickling cucumbers are really struggling with the um, powdery mildew. So when you look at these here, yes, they're still producing. They've got some amazing cucumbers. They're large. Um, they're great for pickling and eating but they, the market moors are much more disease resistant than I'm finding compared to the Boston pickling. So if I had my choice, I would probably just plant the market moors again. Um, <laughs> this is my first year trying to grow eggplant and I have found that eggplant has something called a flea beetle and these tiny little black bugs are creating lots of holes in these eggplants. And it's hard to keep them alive. I've done diametaceous earth and neem oil. Oh, it's starting to rain. And they just are having a hard time. So we'll see if I get any eggplants from them. They seem to be pushing through anyway. But uh, yeah, that's just kind of a rundown on, on what is starting to produce as far as cucumbers go, and what I would plant again. Let's go to the peppers real quick before it starts to rain. Pepper varieties, we've got the bell peppers here, California Wonders, they're just now coming in. Jalapenos are just now coming in. 
but the first variety that we were actually able to harvest and eat were the banana peppers. They did really well. Um, they're still doing really well. The Tabasco haven't come in yet. My uh, Sugar Rush peach haven't come in yet. So we're just, we're waiting on those. Um, my orange bell peppers haven't come in yet. So first ones able to harvest were banana peppers. And I would say second in line would be the jalapenos, the not hot and the hot. They both will be ready to pick. Well, you saw, buddy ate one earlier. As far as these leafy greens go, kale, kale and Swiss chard were ready to eat almost just as soon, if not sooner than the zucchini were. So um, if I had to give my top five of what I could make a meal out of, it would be zucchini, yellow squash, cucumber, kale, and Swiss chard. Those would be my top five uh, plants that you can grow and harvest the quickest. Everything else came in uh, a little bit later. Now some of them I had a direct sow. I didn't start by seed. For instance, green beans I had a direct sow in the ground. Okra I had a direct sow in the ground. Um, so those things would naturally come later because these were all started by seed in January. So keep that in mind. But uh, Ah, gotta go harvest that. Green onions are rocking and rolling still. I'm taking cuttings of these and they keep growing. Um, I'm just using them like chives, just chopping them up and using them like chives and it's adding a really nice flavor to everything. So that's my rundown guys of the varieties of uh, everything. There's the rundown you asked for. I may have expanded some areas that you weren't prepared for. Let's not forget about the spaghetti squash. So spaghetti squash I'm learning, because this is the first time I'm growing it. Um, the plants themselves are not very hardy. One of the plants are pretty, has pretty much died off. Uh, it's this one here. But I've left the vegetables on the vine, and they're actually starting to turn yellow and look like typical spaghetti squash. Some of them are looking like straight up watermelons. They're huge. But uh, this one, even though the plant's starting to die, it's allowing these to start to ripen on the vine. So that's pretty cool. So that might actually work out. And I'll get some spaghetti squash out of those instead of a mystery, a mystery squash that I thought that they were. Yeah, so that's my little rundown. Do you guys hear my little rooster? He's starting to crow. It's adorable. I wonder if I can catch it. He's right there. Oh my gosh. I think he's warning the ladies that it's starting to rain and thunder. Tell him. Oh. Tell him, big boy. But he's talking to his mom. Oh. Tell him, tell him to go inside. Tell him it's time to go inside, it's gonna rain. Their little playpen's working out really well. I've, I've finally gotten it to where they can't get out. They stay in here. They eat some of the vegetables that I throw them that are overripe or bugs got to them. So far, he's the only one that's starting to crow. Um, I suspect I have more roosters in here that are just not mature enough yet. But. Is that good?
Mm. Cherokee purples. Luna. Mom said that she has one of the uh, ladies that buys eggs from her. Um, she requests that her she requests that any duck eggs she has for her husband because he has a health issue and apparently the duck eggs are good for him. So mm. she said if we find any, if we could just let her know because she's trying to collect them all for that one. Did you give her the thing. one that was in the? Not yet, but I told her we had one. Okay, cool. Yeah, maybe they'll um, just start laying there instead. Yeah. I could get one of those fake eggs and put it down in that little nest area mm -hmm. so that they continue to come back to that one spot in the garden. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us on this rainy day um, and uh, giving you a rundown of what I would grow again, what I'll probably skip on next time, um, some lessons that I've learned, maybe not plant the cantaloupe in the middle of the garden. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> so when I put the watermelon in the garden, we'll find a safe space for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, cool. Thanks for joining us today, and we will see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.